Hello and welcome. Today we are going to do part 2 of geography lesson physiographic division of India. If you've missed the first part, there it is and also in the description box below. Check it out and then come back to this one. If you have done that, let's continue. But before that, if you have not subscribed to this channel, do that and don't forget to hit the bell icon so every time I post a new video, you get it first. Let's get into this class. Let's begin with the northern mountains. The northern mountain region is formed by mountain ranges of Karkoram, Ladakh, Zaskar, Himalayas and the eastern highlands. Now these mountain ranges are subdivided into three divisions. They are Trans Himalayas, Himalayas and Purvanchal Hills. So what do we have in Trans Himalayas? We have Karkoram, Ladakh and Zaskar. Let's look at Karkoram. The highest peak in India, that's Mount K2, is in Karkoram range. And Zaskar ranges originate from Pamir Nut. Let's move forward to Himalayas. There are three parallel mountains. The Greater Himalayas, Middle Himalayas and Outer Himalayas. Let's look at each of these. The Greater Himalayas is the northernmost range. They are also referred to or they are called as Inner Himalayas or Himadri. Middle Himalayas are south of Greater Himalayas and they are also called as Himachal. And finally the Outer Himalayas are the southernmost ranges and are called as Shivaliks. The wide longitudinal valleys between the lesser Himalayas and the Shivaliks are called Duns. The height of the northern mountains decreases gradually when it moves towards eastwards. As the mountains cross the Dhyan Gorg, they bend southwards, forming a series of hills running through the states of Natchal Pradesh, Nagaland, Mizoram. Tripura and eastern parts of Assam and all these hills form a boundary between Myanmar and India. Let's move forward. Let's move forward to Purvanchal Hills. Hills on the east are called as Purvanchal. Their height is between 500 meters to, to 2000 meters. In this part there you will find a lot of thick forest. The hills of Kasi and Jayantia and the wettest spots like Cherapunji and Mausanram. It's very essential that we know the importance of Himalayas. The Himalayan ranges form a natural protective wall for India. It protects us from the cold wind that comes from the polar areas. Secondly, it gives birth to Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra rivers and many of its tributaries. The lesser and the outer Himalayas are rich in uh, forest and wildlife. Tourists from all across the globe flock here to see the scenic beauty. For example, Kashmir Valley is known as heaven on earth. Besides this, uh, Kedarnath, Badrinath, Vaishnadevi are other sacred places in the Himalayas. Let's move forward. Now let's look at the great northern plains. Let's get into it. The Great Northern Plains extend over a distance of 2400 kilometers in the east-west direction. And they are formed by the vast depression by the silt brought down by the rivers, the Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. This region is rich with alluvium soil, that is Bangar and Kadar. Next, we move on to Babur and Terai in the northern plains. Babur lands are narrower in the east and wider in the western and northwestern hills region. Now, the Shivalik disappears in the Babur belt. To the south of this belt, they reappear and create a wet, swampy and marshy region known as Terai. Moving along to the western or the Rajasthan plains. They are also known as Thar Desert or Marustali of Thar. This region has many salt lakes 
example Sambar. And Luni is the largest river in the Thar Desert. Let's look at the Indus plain. It is drained by five rivers namely Ravi, Bees, Chenab, Jhelum, and Sutlaj. Moving on to the Ganga plain. Ganga plain is formed by fertile plains between the Ganga and the Yamuna rivers. Next we have the Brahmaputra plains. They comprise of areas extending from foothills of the Himalayas to the northwestern parts of Bengal. The importance of the plains. Plains are highly fertile. It, it has favorable climate. It is flat and helpful for construction of roads and railways. There are many rivers present out here, which is good for irrigation. It is very easy here to do inland and water transportation. So that's it for today. See you next time with part three. Take care. Thank you very much.